Cincinnati Bengals at the Jacksonville Jaguars Monday night football. We've got your props, bets, parlays, tips, and predictions for this NFL Monday night football game. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Monday starts the week, and we're here to make your week a profitable one through the props betting market. I am Andy Lang from wagertalk.com. Joining me, as always, Andrew McGinnis from wagertalk.com. Guys, we're going to break down this big Monday night football game. We're going to take a look at all the props in the different categories, and we've even got same game parlay coming up on this one. Then we're going to look towards next week and what props we hope to see. But, Andrew, let's get right into it. Bengals and Jaguars, when we do this Monday night football game, we always start passing props. Trevor Lawrence versus Jake Browning. Dang, a couple weeks ago, this was going to be Trevor Lawrence versus Joe Burrow. Exciting game, but there's still money to be made in the props betting market. What do you like passing props wise in this one? Yeah, as you as you mentioned there, Andy, man, this had the makeup to be a great game. Uh, same with a lot of games we're seeing in the NFL just being impacted by quarterback injuries. I'll start things off just by looking at Jake Browning under on his pass attempts at 33 and a half. One statistic I look at a lot uh, in the NFL, especially when it comes to matchups like this with lopsided um, games and matchups with point spreads, I like to look at um, time of possession. And the Jacksonville Jags ranked number six in the entire league as far as average time possession per game. And, you know, to me, the the fact of looking at that just kind of really t- tells me how much the Cincinnati Bengals are going to have the ball. And then when they have the ball, what's Jake Browning going to do with it, right? What's his completion percentage going to be? How many times will they have to make big plays and try and go deep? What will they be doing when they have the ball? And, you know, you mix in a few run plays, that takes away a few passing attempts. And you take away a few a few plays that they make. That You know, if he throws a pick, I think that the fact of the matter is Jacksonville is going to hold on to the ball a lot. I don't know how many possessions the Bengals will have, especially in the first half, but if if they don't get the ball early and they don't start, you know, having consistent drives, which I don't really trust Browning to do, then I think it's going to be a very, very long night for them because Jacksonville, as I've talked about with them as a whole, you know, they'll have that long play to Ridley. They'll have one big play that, that Lawrence airs it out. But one thing great about them has been them dumping it off to their running backs, hitting Ingram at the tight end position, marching the field slowly. And I think that it's kind of a, uh, uh, you know, people have the misunderstanding that people don't really understand that just because a team takes forever to get up the field doesn't mean they're not a great team. You know, you don't have to be a highlight team like the Dolphins and get up the field and, you know, three plays. There's certain teams that do it differently. And number six in the entire league in time possession that takes away time from Browning. So I'll look towards the under on attempts. That's 33 and a half. And I like over 20 and a half completions there. For Trevor Lawrence, he's thrown at least 29 attempts in every single game this season. Um, at least 20, uh, 21 completions uh, in eight of his last 11 games. And, you know, I know some people expect this to be a very lopsided game, but in order to get to that point, you got to put points on the board. You got to pass the ball a ton. And I think that that time of possession that I mentioned there correlates with completions. If you don't have possession that often, either it means you're not doing very well or it means that you're getting up the, up the field really fast. And I remember you mentioned to me actually one or two years ago, ago about the Chiefs. Their time in possession was like middle of the pack, if not lower, because they were just getting up the field so quickly on their drives. Not really the case here for the Jags. Um, lots of passes, a uh, heavy pass attack for Trevor Lawrence. So over on completions for Lawrence and under on attempts uh, for Browning. Love it. Uh, I like when you and I, uh, I, I don't know, I, I, don't know. I, I don't know if I like it when you and I agree or, or when we're kind of going down the, the different path, but we're on, we're on different pages today. I'm going Trevor Lawrence under one and a half touchdown passes. He, it's amazing. He's only gone over this in three games this season, and two of them are against my Colts, and the other one is against Tennessee. So any team outside of his division, he's yet to throw two touchdown passes or more, which is a strange stat, but I, you know, numbers don't lie. And since the bye week four out of five quarterbacks have thrown under one and a half touchdown passes against the Bengals. And this is a Bengals team that's only allowed 13 passing touchdowns all season. So they, when it gets close, they just don't allow a lot of passing touchdowns and we'll get to Travis Etienne. I expect Travis Etienne to have a really big night. And I just don't think uh, they're gonna they're gonna force the ball very much against this Bengals team. 
I, I kind of like Jake Browning over his passing yards, 216 and a half. The Jags are much better against the run than they are against the pass. They've given up the fifth most passing yards per game at 255 yards. Browning, he did have 227 last week, so he went over this total, and he gets another full week to get on the same page with this offense, with the coaches, and you know he gets a little bit better, uh, just better reps in practice, which are just going to be you know invaluable. He's going to have a lot more command over the offense. So passing-wise, I kind of like Browning tonight, believe it or not. I think he has a little bit of success. So uh, Trevor Lawrence under TD passes and Jake Browning over passing yards for me. Uh, guys, do me a favor while we're breaking down this video. Hit the like button and leave us a comment. Tell us what your best bet is for tonight. I was pretty surprised. I didn't think there were going to be a lot of props that I liked in this game, but I think there's some really good ones in there. So leave us a comment. Tell us what you found, found in this game and what your best bet is for tonight. And please hit that like button. Uh, Andrew, we're going to talk receiving props. You and I, uh, all of our plays can be found at wagertalk.com. Before we get into receiving props, tell everyone what you have up and where we can find you at. Yeah, of course, wagerstalk.com, as you mentioned, wt.buzz slash am. And I have a pretty good run in the NFL and NHL right now, uh, but an eight and two uh, run combined. Um, NFL and NHL totals have gone really well for me. And uh, it seems to me I haven't really planned it, Andy, but I've just turned into a totals better. It's just how it's worked. Uh, I'm kind of staying away from the side plays. Prop plays go two and one yesterday. So uh, I'll take that and move on to tonight. But you can grab my prop pack, two plays for tonight. Monday Night Football, but of course, you're getting a lot of them uh, right now. But looking forward to a great, great week. Uh, there's so many sports going on, um, so looking forward to cashing some tickets. Awesome. Uh, I am on a, a modest 17-2 and two run in the NFL. Whoa. So, <laughs> so uh, listen, uh, it's, it's a great streak. We're certainly proud of it, but we're going to be very, very careful because we all know regression is a cruel, cruel thing. Um, but we do have a best bet that we love tonight. We were debating whether or not we were going to put it up. And we just thought, you know what? We're coming off a 7-1 and one weekend in the NFL. And we love some of the props. So we're, we do have a best bet up. And uh, along with that play, I have an NBA and NHL uh, cross-sport parlay that I love for tonight. Got a couple NBA games with a really, really nice spot. And then, Andrew, you mentioned NHL. Love the slate for tonight. I think there's a couple of good spots in NHL. So you can grab that at wagertalk.com, uh, two-pack. Most important, you get the NFL best bet as well as that cross-sport parlay. So that's Andy Lang at wagertalk.com. Um, Andrew, I'll go first for receiving props. I'm going to go with a guy that is off the radar, and I think we're getting a lovely number, and that's Tanner Hudson, the tight end for the Cincinnati Bengals. Give me over two and a half receptions at plus money, plus 110. This is a Jaguars team that gives up 4.6 receptions per game to tight ends and i think this is going to shock everybody hudson's had four four six and four receptions his last four game he had four uh, uh, with jake browning at quarterback he only had 18 yards so we're not looking at his yards we're looking at his uh we're looking at his receptions this is very similar to the Brees hall prop andrew that you and i talked about on friday where it's like nope let's take Brees hall over his receptions not his yards because it's checked down central and it, it that ended up cashing. If you had Brees Hall receptions, you get it. And um, I, I'm going the same thing. I'm I'm going to ignore Jamar Chase and Christian Kirk and Calvin Ridley, and I'm going to find value in uh, this this name this name that not a lot of people know. So honestly, we 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 talk about this, Andrew. What'd you say? We only need one. I, so I only need one receiving prop to cash, and it's going to be Tanner Hudson at plus money over two and a half receptions. What'd you find in the receiving props? I love it, Andy. I love it. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, a lot of times when I look towards, um, you know, inexperienced quarterbacks, I like to look towards receiving props for running backs. I like Joe Mixon over on his receiving number. He had just two catches last week for 40 yards. I mean, this is a guy I don't want to look at receptions. I want to look at yards for someone that kind of, I don't really trust to run the ball as much these days, as much as I, I want him to be more of a pass catcher. And I feel like that's kind of the position they'll put him in. Uh, we're going to see Browning stand in the pocket struggle to find anybody. And then I'd be like, all right, Mixon, I guess we'll give it to you. And it will, you know, you're my last choice, but uh, I'll hand it off to you. And I think that, you know, when you look at the numbers you see with running backs, especially like Mixon at the receiving position, you know, you're going to literally be able to maybe get this off two to three receptions. It's all you really need, but talk about only needing one. Um, and the tight end position. It's funny how we, we mentioned that there, 
I'm looking at Ingram. You know, the Bengals, um, second worst team against the tight end position, uh, giving up 71 yards per game, gave up 120 yards last week. And uh, Ingram has surpassed over uh, 41 and a half receiving yards in uh, 11 games this season. So, I mean, this is to me a light number here. There's obviously so much attention to be on um, key players like Ridley, like Christian Kirk, who has been their most consistent player, no doubt. Uh, everyone's talking about the health of, of Zay Flowers. But I think this is just an extremely light number here um, that I feel like there just won't be as much attention on Ingram. And he's been kind of that safety valve for uh, Trevor Lawrence. Not, not to say he'll really have the heaviest pass rush going at him, but I think this is kind of a spot where you're just digging in on the lower number. You know, you've got Kirk, you've got Ridley. I feel like with those guys, you kind of want to pick which one has that big night. But with Ingram, I can count on him getting his touches and getting the ball. So that's my favorite play, I'd say. But um, I think Mixon is, as you'll find out in a second, I'm out on his run game. I'm higher on his receiving game, actually. Well, let's just uh, transition into it because you and I are on the same page exactly. Uh, let's talk rushing props. I'll, I'll just let you start. You're, I'm guessing you're going Joe Mixon under, huh? I am. Yeah. And I think I just look at the fact that number one, look at this Bengals team as far as their rushing yards per game. It's embarrassing. I mean, they are struggling big time. Um, they are ranked like near the bottom in rushing yards per game. And the fact of the matter is it's been a rotating door as far as who is healthy is Burrow going to be in is the backup quarterback. What's going to happen with them. But when it comes down to it, they've mostly just been, it's been like screen passes. It's been, you know, if they're going to give it to running backs, it's been more so in the pass catching game. And you look at the matchups he's had, even when he's been given bottom 10 teams against the rush, he's struggled. You give him a team that's top five against the rush, he's going to struggle. And the fact of the matter is they're going to be down in this game. Jake Browning is going to have to make plays himself. And speaking of which, I actually like him over 12 and a half rushing yards himself. That's actually my favorite rushing play here uh, is their quarterback. You know, I feel like um, it's hard to have information on a player like this. You don't really know much about him. Uh, against Baltimore, he rushed for a handful of times for 40 yards. Uh, last week, still got a handful of, of rushes, attempts, but didn't go over this number. Um, but, you know, I'm not a huge college guy, but I was looking into his college history. When he was in college, Andy, he's the kind of guy that if he didn't really see anything available, he wasn't shy to get on the move and, and use his feet to, to go. And I feel like if you're him right now, this is your opportunity to make a name for yourself. This is an opportunity against a great team, primetime football. Um, you have to recognize it early. And I feel like the Jacksonville Jags have a good pass rush. They will be coming after him. And if he doesn't see some open targets, I feel like he'll get on the move. And if this 12 and a half number, I mean, is the number you guys can all get out there. Let's think about it. You only need, I would say, three rush attempts. That's what I'm going to put the number at. You get three rush attempts from Jake Browning. I think you get over here. And like I mentioned, against the Baltimore defense, he gathered 40 yards. So I'm going to take the under on Mixon, but over on their quarterback tonight. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a hundred percent lockstep with you on Joe Mixon. I, I just thought he looked pretty bad. And I think the, the recipe is pretty simple here. Try and stop Mixon and make Browning beat you. I think he's going to have a little bit better game than most expect, but yeah, you want to just, if you're the Jags, you say, Hey, we got to, you know, the, the Jags allow the third least amount of rushing yards per game anyways. So they're good against the run. Uh, and then you've got, you know, you got Mixon with that one. I, it may be low hanging fruit and it may be the, the easiest prop on the board, but Travis Etienne over 66 and a half. I mean, the Bengals are getting shredded. Uh, oh, they're giving up over 166 yards per game rushing the last three games. And ETN, they ruled him in uh, two days ago to play. His injury is ribs. It's not an ankle or a knee or anything. And uh, I, I was listening to uh, a, a fantasy uh, football wrap-up show last night, and somebody mentioned something about ribs, and one of the guys goes, yeah, Toradol shots are a beautiful thing. So he's going to be fine tonight. Uh, he's, <laughs> I have no worries about it. And I, yeah, he's, he's, he's going to be the starter. And I... I I love when I love when people are worried about like, well, what if they're up big? You know, do they pull them? And it's like, well, if, if the Jags are up big, it's probably because ETN has a big game. So mm -hmm. uh, if it's a close game, he's going to play all four quarters. If they don't, you know, if they don't put him in late, 
uh, it's because they're up big. And this Jaguars team does not have a lot of confidence in their backup running backs. They really don't. Uh, we, we've seen Travis Etienne has a huge share of the carry. So if he's healthy, he's getting the work. And this is a Bengals team that is just really, really struggling um, to get it get it together on the ground. So Travis Andy, Etienne really quick. over – uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I really like that point you made because I, I think it's something I've stressed a lot to people recently. And when you hear people talk about blowouts and, and this game might be out of hand, well, how did the game get out of hand? You know what I mean? Like you're betting props and you're worried about a number being too high because what if the game is a blowout? And I've heard this from people so many times when I look, I, you've been a big fan in some of these big matchups with the Dallas Cowboys, right? When they're big favorites. I've had people tell me, you know, I, I wouldn't look at that prop. You know, they're, you know, they might be up like ah, CD might not get there. CD lamb is getting there because they're blowing them out. Right. And, and I think it's important for people to realize that the blowouts, sometimes it's okay to, to think, you know, simple, stupid and say, this is a big blowout game. This guy's going to have a good night. You know, I think you're right with this prop. I, I really do. I think if they get there and have a great game, it's because he does well. Yeah, it it is funny. Some of those, like, man, they pulled him late, and it's like they have forty three points. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he got his stats. He's, like, he's yeah. okay. So, so uh, there you go, guys. Monday night football. Um, Andrew, do you have any team totals or miscellaneous stats for this one? I got a same game parlay. I can go over as well. I'm just ready for your same game parlay. I actually don't tonight, Andy. Okay, this is a uh, plus 128 same game parlay uh, from our good friends at FanDuel. I can take uh, Evan Ingram on the alt line receptions to just have three or more receptions. Uh, he's had four or more in every single game this year. So uh, you've got total trust in Trevor Lawrence. He's a big part of that offense. And uh, Bengals give up over six catches a game to tight end. So Evan Ingram is a perfect parlay if you're doing the same game parlay in jags games that's your bingo free space evan ingram alt line over reception so i'll take three i'm going to take travis Etienne 40 plus rushing yards i talked about how i think he has a good game this is a struggling Bengals defense so i want i want some part of travis Etienne. so i'll take his over 40 plus rushing yards and then I like I like Browning over 216. I'll just drop him down to 200 plus yards. This is a guy that had 227 last week against the Steelers and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, their pass defense is not very good, and game script should be in favor of the Bengals having to pass late. If I, I don't see any game script where the Bengals are just up big and they abandon the pass. So I think Browning has to throw. I think he gets over 200 yards. So plus 128, I get Evan Ingram to have three or more receptions, Travis Etienne 40-plus rushing yards, and Jake Browning 200-plus uh, passing yards. That is plus 128 on FanDuel. There's your same game parlay. So Thoughts, Andrew? Well, I think that – now, number one, I usually I think when you look at a price like that and you've got that many legs, I'm like, hey, uh, I don't know. I want more of more of a juicy price. I'm I'm out of that mindset now. I've gotten a lot better personally. I used to have greed when it comes to same game parlays, Andy. I was that guy that wanted to have the biggest price ever, you know, no alt lines. But I like that because you're picking guys that you think are gonna have a good game, getting a better number down and um, you don't, you know, you really don't have, you're not asking for a lot. I think if the game script goes as you and I just expect, just broke it down to, then it, it should be all right. But, uh, I think Ingram's my favorite bet of the night. So I think that one should be in everyone's same game parlay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. That's good to do it for Monday night football. And as always guys, we try and look ahead towards next week. So, um, it's a, it's a tough slate of games and Andrew, I love what you were saying about how, you, you like a lot of the bad games <laughs> for the props. And that's the beautiful thing yeah. about the prop market is sometimes the best props are just in the ugly, ugly games. I mean, taking unders in that Patriots <laughs> chargers game yesterday, was just a beautiful thing. So, um, you know, I mean, the Patriots team total was 17 and a half. I mean, that, I mean, unbelievable. So, so let's look ahead, Andrew, uh, what, what game, what bad games are you looking to make money off of next week? I wanted I wanted to shout out to actually well, I don't know if you can say this is too bad of a game, but Colts and Bengals next week, Andy. Um, I talked about Michael Pittman uh, on the show on Friday. Um, unfortunately, I think I went like one and two on that game when I, when I broke it down on, on Friday's show. But that was my best pick by far on that one. His targets are just so consistent. 
and we talk about, you know, how heavy this, the passing game is here. Um, despite them having a decent run game, I know that they've got an injury now, but look at these target numbers, 16, 13, 12, 8, 13. I mean, he is having a phenomenal, he had 11 receptions yesterday on 16 targets. Like this is, this is something where it's almost like you just can't ignore it. Like they're making it very clear how much they're going to give the ball to him. Um, so I am very, very curious what they're going to make his number back to back a hundred plus yard games. Um, but one thing I find a lot of the time is that they really don't overreact to, to players having a couple good weeks when they're not on great teams, right? If Rasheed Rice has pops off for three straight weeks for the chiefs, they're going to be like, yep, we got to extend his number. But if you're, if you're on a bad team or a mediocre team, they really don't adjust to your number that quickly. So just something to mention there about Michael Pittman and the targets uh, that he's getting. I love a little revenge game, Seahawks and Niners. Um, look, it's got to be a Christian McCaffrey. It's got to be looking at not just the rushing, but rushing and receiving. Um, I think I've made two of those combo bets this season, and I'm 2-0. and oh. And I think that when you look at McCaffrey, um, he's the kind of guy you want to be looking at that combo bet. The last time out, he had 114 rushing uh, against the Seahawks. He also was like, no big deal. I'll just add 55 yards through the air as well. Um, so he's somebody you want to have your eye on. And as far as that game in particular as well, um, I really think you're going to look towards minimal rushing um, from the Seahawks. I think that... You, you want to establish the run against the Niners team, but I think sometimes it almost builds frustration. If you're not able to do it, you're just punting the ball back. It doesn't really establish much. They have to get DK and Tyler Lockett going um, early on. And you talked about it, how fun it is to uh, to bet uh, th these game bad games that I was mentioning to you. And, and I remember last week, the celebration you had for cashing a Tim Boyle ticket. Look, <laughs> here's the truth. No matter who is the quarterback, I don't care who it is, okay, who is a quarterback for the New York Jets. I want to look towards under on attempts because their drives, I, I talked about earlier looking at time of possession. They are in the bottom of the NFL in time of possession. Like any touchdown they've had has either been a pick six, a fumble recovery, or one huge play. Like they're not scoring TDs when they're marching the field for half a quarter. All right. It's just not happening. So looking at whoever it's been, Zach Wilson, Boyle, whoever's been out there, they're going under and, and the Texans. Sure. They've been involved in some higher scoring games. Look at some of the teams they've let put up some numbers on them. But I think this is the ultimate example of me hoping to see a good number hoping to get kind of a, a good number to fade the passing attack of this New York Jets team and their team total. Because look, the Houston Texans don't have a good reputation as far as their defensive game. You know, people talk about their offensive weapons, the year CJ Stroud's having, but you don't really hear people hyping up their defense too much. I'm hoping I can get a good number of fade in these Jets players. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm totally with you on that one. Uh, I, I got it. I think I go back to Brees Hall. And just over his receptions, it just it just seems like this is a check down uh, offense. I mean, it was a check down offense without <laughs> without Tim Boyle in there, so I don't know why that would why that would change. Um, uh, we're getting this Philly this Philly and Cowboys game, and sorry, producer Dan, I'm going back to fading that Philly secondary. I, I give me th this may just be a same game parlay, but give me. Dak Prescott over one and a half touchdown passes and the Dallas team total over. It's just an insanely brutal uh, schedule for Philly. Um, I think you just kind of saw a little bit of fatigue and it just like, oh man, this, this, I mean, this run of tough teams that they're playing. And then this kind of wraps up the hardest part, but th this is a, this is a really important game for both teams. So I think you're going to get full effort on both. And I just don't think this Philly secondary is going to be good enough to, to stop Dallas. So I want that one. You mentioned the 49ers. I would want to do something with their team total. Seattle just gave up 41 and 31 uh, to Dallas and to San Francisco. How about this for a schedule for Seattle, San Francisco at Dallas, San Francisco, Philly. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> just, Whoa. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So uh, here you go, guys. Better get your wins out of the way early because you're not getting them late. Um, uh, if, I hope Travis Etienne uh, uh, has a great game tonight and comes out unscathed because he gets the Browns 
next week. Andrew, I've been talking about how bad this Browns rushing defense has become. They did it again. They gave up 120 yards rushing to the Rams. Kyron Williams was in, was a cash to go over. So this Browns defense, man, take the posing running backs. It's just, it's you're getting a really good number because of their success early in the season. So take advantage of it. So I hope to get a good number on Travis Etienne as well. I would also look at uh, Devontae Adams uh, overs. Aiden O'Connell's just peppering him with targets. You did a good job talking about Pittman. Uh, Adams is another one that has a bunch of these targets coming his way. And I, w- boy, Austin Eckler is just an under machine on his rushing total. I don't even, I think he didn't even have 20 yards yesterday. And now they're facing the Broncos who, that defense has just gotten better and better and better. Eckler's just, man, he's just not hes not getting it done on the ground. And, uh, I mean, if you own him in fantasy, you know that he's just been slowly getting worse and worse as the season goes on. So I don't know what number they're going to put out. They've been putting out like 48 and a half, 49 and a half. It's probably going to drop to like, I don't know, 42 or 43 and a half after yesterday's performance. But I don't know if I would take him over anything at this point. 14 carries, 18 yards yesterday. So. Uh, so those are some, those are some props that we are, uh, looking for. So, uh, Andrew, real quick, one more time, tell everyone where we can find you at and what you have up for today. Yeah, of course, over at wagershawk.com. Uh, same as you there, Andy. And uh, I got two plays up in the NFL tonight, Monday Night Football. Uh, haven't got NHL up quite yet, but uh, looking at one best bet, uh, one play uh, might be on the horizon for me and then mixing in some prop plays as well. All props for me this year are 1%. Prop plays are doing pretty well. And, uh, Hopefully we can keep dominating that shots on goal market, Andy. So looking forward to tonight, man. Love it. We got an NFL best bet. Uh, it's actually it's actually a, a parlay. We've I the, running the parlay numbers. Like we always say, like it's not that you parlay, it's what you parlay. Like so, parlays are great. We're it's we're over sixty one percent for the year. We're over sixty three units for the year, and uh, NFL has been really really good to us. Seventeen and two run coming off a of seven and one. Uh, weekend in the NFL. We've got our best bet that's up and we're going to throw in a cross sport parlay with uh, NBA and NHL tonight. So grab that one price. You get two plays in there. So it's a great deal. Wagertalk.com. You can find myself and Andrew there. Guys, let's have a good Monday night football. I I said before the weekend, I thought this was going to be a really good props weekend. It looks like it's gone really good. Let's close it out tonight with another winning night. Good luck on all your plays tonight. We'll see everyone on Friday on Prop It Up.